So as you all know, I've had the pleasure of spending the weekend with Steph Hackerty and Charles Dowding. Um, I'm at the amazing garden of Charles's now. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. It's an absolute honour to be here and very exciting. Um, loads of questions going through my head around no dig and trying to understand it myself because I really want to get into no dig. There's so many questions that it literally it's just baffle me. So I thought I get to ask you them and I'm sure they're baffling me then they're baffling so many other people yeah. hopefully. So it might be able to help a lot of other people answer it. So how did you originally get into gardening in the first place? Oh, I was working with my mother a bit and uh, we were planting trees and I was just helping her. Yeah. I found I really enjoyed it, so I yeah, just took it from there. So, how did you go from, I suppose, have you always done no dig or how did that start, you, you and no dig and create? Uh, yeah, I started off rotovating. <laughs> I grew up on a farm <laughs> and yeah. uh, the first market garden I had was an acre and a half and I rotovated the grass yeah. because I didn't know any other way. Yeah. And then made beds with a spade. And I had these beautiful raised beds, an acre and a half. It took me two months to make them. And then I thought, well, what am I going to do now? I don't want to yeah. rotate again, so I'll lose all my nice beds. And I did a bit of research and found that no dig is possible and just got into it gradually from there. Fantastic. So I think that's what a lot of people say. I remember when I first got my lot, when people said to me, oh, rotate it, use weed killer, yeah. do this, do that. And it's like, yeah. and I think you go with what, what, you get given so much advice from every yeah. different angle, you don't know what to do. So I yeah. think it's, it's trying to learn different ways to do it and then coming up with your own right way I think of totally doing it but all until recently the the no dig method has barely been out there and it yeah but, but thanks to work I've been doing a lot here and now other people and it's spreading like wildfire I say actually it's yes. fantastic so it is more of a viable option for me yeah people. I think a lot of people have now I think I've been known as I said to you over lunch to call mm. it a movement I think a lot of people are understanding it as a concept and I think yeah. and actually you know what if I can save time and actually you get so much better results actually out of it as well then yeah. it's a no-brainer yeah to tr at least give it a go and see if it works yeah. for you so what are the key basic steps to beginning so if you say you've just got an allotment or a garden and it is all grass or it's overgrown what are the key steps to make well you've got to kill start? the weeds yeah so unless you're lucky enough to start with clean soil if that's yeah. the case it's really easy you just spread a bit of compost on top and, and off you go yeah so it's feeding from the surface but if you've got lots of weeds you can also use some compost but that won't be enough to kill things perennial weeds yeah. like cooch grass so then sometimes it might be a case of using polythene okay or you could put a thick layer of cardboard over the weeds yeah. and then some compost on top which allows you to sow and plant straight away yeah while the weeds are dying underneath the cardboard is yeah. a temporary barrier then yeah. the cardboard decays say within two months so that your okay. plants can root through you never yeah. have to remove the cardboard it, just rots in situ yeah. and some weeds will push through depending what they are you know if you're unlucky enough to have mares tail yeah that's a big job and you've just got to keep pulling keep but the mulching process weakens the parent roots without disturbing the soil right. so the soil does not feel the same urge yeah. to grow weeds like yeah. when you those of you who rotivated yeah you know and I know because I've done it yeah you get an incredible flush of weeds and with no dig you just don't get that so it's a, in the end it's a huge time saver yeah no, it makes so much sense. So one question that I, I, I've asked to you before is probably, I think, the most uh, silly questions, even though they're not really, because they're, they're a question that I come up with. But how long, if you put, is there a time period you have to leave the the cardboard and then the compost as it is before you can start planting into yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, one second. <laughs> <laughs> See, in my head, I was like, do you have to leave it for a long time? Yeah. Or can you literally just put the cardboard down? Yeah, is yeah, a lot of people ask that. So it's compost. just beautiful because you can do it in the morning have a cup of tea or not even have a cup of tea you know, carry crazy. on planting so so carrots even if you want you know in the compost straight away the extraordinary thing is if you google can i sow into compost or plant into compost apparently from what i've told 90 percent of the answers are no <laughs> there's a bit of a myth out there that um it burns the roots you know stuff, but yeah. that would be only fresh chicken manure or something that yeah. most people wouldn't use anyway compost is great you can sow and plant what about perennial weeds as you're saying this is like cooch grass and most cow what about those because that's my thing is, is they come, how do you deal with them with no dig well it's the initial thorough mulching yeah. if you but if you want to crop straight away yeah. you need more compost i would use really thick cardboard or two layers of cardboard even say six inches 15 centimeter compost right. this is just as a one-off yeah. not every year you have yeah. to do this 
and that gives you a starting point and an entry point where you can grow but you will get some of those weeds pushing yeah. through not as many as you would think though but you've got to keep pulling keep them keep pulling them out you've got to be on it all through that first summer you can think of year one that first phase is different to yeah. ongoing and be prepared to put in some extra shift then yeah because that can give you a total 100 percent elimination of cooch grass wow. ever after that's the beauty of it because when you don't disturb the soil, if you yeah. try and dig creature grass roots out, the, yeah. the soil reacts by trying to regrow yeah. it and disturb it so it needs to recover. Yeah. But when you leave it mulched undisturbed, it, it's, it's just quite the yeah. stand. It's amazing. You know, you've got to try it to believe it. But here, where, behind us, where that greenhouse is, when I arrived yeah. here five years ago, that was solid cooch grass in February. And wow. by August, there was none. That's um, crazy. 0%. That's crazy. I think you were saying about keeping it compact. Is how we were talking about off camera as well, about walking on soil, because I was, there's so many things in terms of, I've heard about you have to dig to the air to the soil and then you're not allowed to walk yeah. on soil, yeah. and so down there, there like, but I, I, I do, I do walk on it. Um, but if you're told you're not supposed to, and yeah. we we're saying that, how does that, the interesting can, you, thing, can you not yeah. walk on soil? Because I think when, 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 when you adopt no-do practice, so, so many of the kind of maxims that are yeah. out there, become irrelevant because they're they're all geared to the fact yep. that you've originally done that soil disturbance yeah so i walk on my beds if i need to like i am now i'm standing yep. on a bed i'm not compacting it because i haven't broken the structure so there's still a very strong matrix of structure there yeah which will support weight rather like when you stand on grass yeah. or whatever so you don't need to worry about you know that this this word compaction gets massively overused yeah. I think. Um, all I'm doing here is maybe firming it down a bit, just That's the surface it. compost, yeah. Yeah. but it's not <laughs> hurting the soil. So, you know, it's kind of liberating that a lot of the things that you're told you could, can't do, you actually can I do. I know, yeah. there's a lot of things that I've thought you can't do this, you can't do that, and actually some of it is the complete opposite. Yeah. So it's actually the complete opposite that actually gets the best results. So it's, I think I found it fascinating and I knew what I would, so I just wanted the chance to, be able to yeah, ask you those questions that hopefully a lot of people, other people have Awesome. Actually, it is super easy. To the do. thing is also just to understand the simplicity of it. You, um, aeration. You know, people worry about that. Will my soil be aerated yep. enough if I haven't dug or forked yeah. it? And that's what the, the surface application of organic matter is. Yep. How it works in nature that soil organisms are all geared. It's their, in their genome yep. to come up and look for food at the surface. Then you know it's not like uh, the idea of incorporating compost manure would be a bit like people trying to drilling into our stomach and put food in there, you know, on the top, and that's where they come up to feed. So that's making channels all the time, air channels for drainage and aeration. And we find here, this is heavy soil here. It's a heavy soil. Yeah. When it rains, sometimes there's water lying around the edge of the garden on the grass, yeah. and none in the middle, not even on the paths. The paths are immaculate as well, yeah. and that's actually a very important point. Yeah. You, you need to look after your paths. You see also there's no wooden slugs. Yes. Yeah. That's a way of having less slugs. This also is another nice part of it. So this is all geared to minimum slug habitat. I don't use any slug pellets. Yeah. So I'm just keeping it that there's nowhere for the slugs to hide and not having wooden yeah. size saves slugs and saves you money. That's incredible. Well, thank you so much for your it's time again. And it's been an absolute pleasure. And hopefully people will find it learn that they actually how easy it is and they can give it at least give it a go and maybe trial both for that's a bit that's a very good idea and trial both and then at least Do then in, they side. can then yeah. prove the point to the, see it themselves yeah. see the difference yeah. to themselves yeah. but yeah, yeah thank you very much